corner. Well, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, it's really incredible. We're excited. This has been a long time coming. It's going to make a huge difference here at the port. I, I want to keep watching. I don't want to. I don't want to waste. <laughs> I'm not talk to these guys, but this. I just want to keep seeing it spin because it's pretty cool. And what's this going to mean to the port while you're while you're watching? It's going to make, uh, you know, we've already had tremendous success here at the port and lots of growth and, uh, and increased jobs and breaking records left and right. We deepened the port. We, and now this is going to help us unload them much faster. Uh, you know, these cranes are uh, 25 feet taller than the other ones, uh, the, the tallest ones we had. They can handle the biggest ships in the world without spinning them around. It can reach over, get all the containers off. So it's going to speed for the production. And with the uh, with the rest of the efforts we're making at the uh, Howard Street Tunnel, uh, you know that's going to enable us to double stack trains and uh, just dramatically increase the production here. But this is a cool thing to see. Uh, they've been out on the on uh, you know coming across the ocean for two months, so uh, out in some hurricanes, but they made it safely. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna make all you guys run up <laughs> the stairs to the top. We're gonna do a gaggle up here on the top of the tallest thing there, but. Uh, We'll have Bill Doyle, the director of the port. So we might pull you over to. Uh, oh, we're going to go over there. I think we need to get away a little bit. Okay. Watch that cord in line. Let's put the boat in the back. backdrop. Yeah, backdrop of the ship. Okay. Yeah, I was going to scoop right. Tell me what you need me to do. Check it. Guys, if you have all look this way and then we'll grab a shot. Moving close, Governor. Nice and close, nice and tight. Turn a little bit more close, turn a little sideways. Perfect, good. Mark, good. Everybody looks fantastic. Everybody look at this gentleman right here. Right here. Perfect. Now right here. Action. Can we get some thumbs up? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, gentlemen. Can I clip through your ball? All right. You can do whatever you want. Now the news guys get them. Love it. You guys still set it up a little bit here. We don't want to get a big bang. Yeah, I'll try to add the balance. What's, what's that? Test one, two, three, four, five, six. Mic check one, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Help it. Oh man, thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. I'll back that up. Good. Bill, point off at the cranes like you're not obvious they're up there. Good job, Bill. Good. And right back here, Michelle. Governor? Looks like trace later. Good, perfect. <laughs> Those are the cranes, yes they are. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure where they were. I'm on the super brain. This is great. This is awesome. It's great. You should stay on there. Really good. And it's not hot. You got no brain. Oh, no. That's the other thing. Come on up to the mic up and come there. Go ahead. We're going to get started out here. Come on, guys. Let's step up. Come on up, guys. Go. Well, good afternoon. Uh, here at the Port of Baltimore, Maryland Port Administration, I just want to introduce a few folks. Uh, of course, we have the governor, Governor Larry Hogan. Uh, we have Secretary of Transportation, uh, Greg Slater. We have Chris Connor, uh, CEO for the American Association of Port Authorities, and also he was the former CEO international for Willenius Will Helmsman, ship over there. Uh, John Picari, U.S. envoy uh, for the um, uh, Biden administration uh, came to visit with us today, and Bod Hogan's. Bod Hogan's is the um, leader for Ports America here in the Port of Baltimore. 
We also have Scott Cowan. Scott, please come up here. Uh, Scott Cowan is the uh, uh, local president for the ILA Local 333. So that's the folks that we have here. Now, real quick, guys. Um, that crane ship, that vessel, it had quite a journey. It started in Shanghai, came down around the Cape of Good Hope through the Indian Ocean, headed over to the Caribbean, almost a beeline to Florida. And what type of season do we have right now? It's a very active hurricane season. So that ship was able to maneuver around these hurricanes, come up the coast, and it actually arrived off the Atlantic down in Cape Henry around the 30th of August. But we had to keep that ship off in the Atlantic until Hurricane Ida drained through the region. And now it's here safely. It's going to take a couple of weeks um, to, to unload the cranes, a month or so uh, or two to get this thing fully operational by the end of the year. And those cranes will be doing largest ships that could fit through the Panama Canal, 14,000 TEU, add another 2,000 if they want to come through the Suez Canal, 16,000 TEU container ships. But it's the public-private partnership. Governor Larry Hogan is here. He can explain more, but thank you very much. A great day, sir. Thank you, Bill. Yes, sir. Well, thank you all. It's, uh, I think, uh, you know, Bill said just about everything there is to say, but it's an exciting day uh, for the Port of Baltimore. It's an exciting day for Maryland. Uh, couldn't be more proud of the hard work that's being done here at the port. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, record-breaking years, year after year. Uh, we continue to increase production here, and this is just one more step that's going to help us in that direction. You know, it's a years of effort of, of uh, dredging these, uh, these ports out to 50 feet so we can handle the biggest ships in the world. And uh, now with these largest cranes, I think, in the world that are 25 feet taller than the previous ones, they can reach all the way across the widest ships without turning them around. It's going to dramatically increase production here at the port. Uh, as you know, we're also uh, deepening the, uh, the Howard Street Tunnel, which is going to enable us to double stack trains, which is going to help us move stuff off the ships and out of the port. Uh, even faster, it's going to create more jobs here in the state, both directly at the port, uh, but also all across the state and throughout the region and uh, this part of the country. So it's a big day. Uh, we're very excited about it. We have another little more excitement, too. On the other side of the port, uh, the Carnival Cruise Lines is pulled in on Sunday. To, uh, they'll be taking off on Sunday with the first ship. They're here now. Uh, we're back open for business with, uh, with with cruise ships, which is an exciting thing as well. But this is a big deal, and uh, this is just the start. We're going to continue to uh, open up more berths. We'll, we're going to continue to work on getting more of these cranes, and we're going to continue to try to dramatically increase production and jobs here in the state. With that, well, I think any of us would be happy to take some questions. So Bill, I was just wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit about what happens next. You mentioned it'll take a couple of weeks to unload, and then help, and then some more time to get it operational. Can you just kind of walk us through those steps? Yes, I, I can walk you through, but I'm going to have uh, Bod Hogan's finish it. So the ship's going to come alongside, all right? So we have new fenders. The fenders are on the dock right now. Fenders, F-E-N-D-E-I-S. Um, they, they're, they're here. The ship's going to come up, lay against, and then it's going to take, we'll have crane companies and some of our um, uh, private contractors help unload these cranes from the ship and basically store them at the dock until we can get operational. Bob, please, if you could finish up. Or yeah, e up. exactly uh, what Bill said. So next couple, next couple weeks, we'll be unloading the cranes. They actually come off on rails, and then they're set down on the rails that you see here. Um, they will jack up the substructures up to the top. There'll be pieces added to the top, and then they jack up the substructures. Uh, you know, as he said, hopefully uh, the beginning of the year will be operational with these cranes. You know, they really mean a lot. It's the next phase here in the Port of Baltimore. As the governor said, preparing for that Howard Street Tunnel, the additional volume that's coming. We just got the two new services, and it's really – a part of the $166 million investment that we're making here in the port to grow capacity, efficiency, create jobs, not only for our ILA workforce, but for everyone in the supply chain. It's really about making the Port of Baltimore one of the most efficient supply chains in the U.S. What can these cranes do that those can't, and will these be still operational as well? Yep. Yeah, so they can do the same thing. Uh, these can just work some bigger ships. As the governor said, they're about 25 feet higher. Uh, the booms on these are a little longer, so it can handle a little wider ship. These can work a ship that is 23 con shipping containers wide. So that's how long the booms are on these. So a little longer boom, a little higher in the air.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we had plenty of clearance coming up underneath the Bay Bridge and the Key Bridge. When he says plenty of clearance, it was four feet. Four feet. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't look like a lot of clearance. Yeah, in our industry, that's plenty of clearance. <laughs> yep, yeah, so yeah, plenty of clearance coming up. So no title issues or anything like that, but yeah. Yep. A big yeah. wave would have been a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, I stood on that Bay Bridge this morning when that bridge, when that boat was coming underneath of it. Four feet of clearance. You know, it looks tight. Uh, you know, as we're moving, we had to actually shut one span down for traffic because cars going across would see that and and it would uh, catch their attention. Can you talk about the price tag of this and uh, the investment that you hope to see back? Yeah, so um, as I said, these cranes are part of a $166 million project that we're working on, and it's really focused around growing capacity here in the Port of Baltimore to support the Howard Street Tunnel expansion. Um, in the spring, we have uh, more cranes coming, not uh, berth cranes, but yard cranes coming to support increased growth. These cranes here represent over $50 million you see sitting on the ship right here. Yep. And it's a great public-private partnership, as Bill mentioned. Uh, we, we've been focused on public-private partnerships with, with respect to uh, our transit, with respect to our highways. And here at the port, it's certainly a perfect example of uh, the government and at all levels working together with the private sector and labor to really accomplish great things and create more opportunities and more jobs. I'm sure, like, you know, obviously great lengths have been, gone, have been taken to make sure they cut here safely, but what kind of inspection happens now and, like, What's the process to, you know, hopefully there's no defects, but do you do any kind of check to make sure? Yep, yeah, there's annual inspections that go on with all cranes each year to make sure that they are safe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that, um, so, you know, Bod Hogan's and, and Ports America Chesapeake, um, you know, that's that private sector investment money that they're putting in uh, to this terminal. But on the, on the public side, on our side, the state, uh, the state is spending tens of millions of dollars itself. As a matter of fact, the Howard Street Tunnel, $200 million of the $465 million is coming from the state. We also, uh, when we do the dredging, so the Maryland Port Administration was responsible for all the dredging along this dock, right here uh, and the next one down. And that comes from state money. That's our matching for the federal grant programs. So we're responsible for that. So you really do have a federal, state, private sector investment here uh, on that P3, which is just tremendous. So. Is there any update on when there could be groundbreaking for the Howard Street Tunnel? Where are we at with that? In the fall. <laughs> Governor Hogan, it's almost the, fall. Uh, the, the president of Chuck uh, announced a vaccine mandate for federal uh, workers. Where do you stand in terms of maybe that for state employees as well as some counties are from well, I didn't see. I think at three o'clock the president's going to have an announcement. I haven't seen uh, what I, I saw some leaks earlier about what what it might be included, but I really can't comment on what what action he is or isn't going to take. Uh, I'm anxious to hear. Uh, we've been working very closely with the White House. Uh, you know, we've we're just proud of where we are in the state. Uh, all the actions we've taken so far have helped us be one of the most vaccinated states in the, in the country. Uh, we're second lowest in positivity rate in uh, case rate in uh, in America, behind Connecticut. Uh, and uh, we vaccinated already more than 80% of the entire population, 12 and up. So uh, all the steps we've taken so far, we're, we're pleased to uh, be ahead of most of the people in the country, and we're anxious to see what the president does uh, this afternoon. Nothing like that coming for state employees? So, so far, we're exactly where we need to be. Governor, have you been made aware of a new internal audit um, at Baltimore County Public Schools highlighting um, low morale among employees and potential violations yeah, I, uh, I saw the report, uh, on, I saw your story last night on, uh, on the news, uh, but I have not had, I haven't seen the report or any details of it. I know that our team internally is certainly interested in taking a look at that audit, which we don't have a copy of, and trying to get to the bottom of it. But we're concerned about things going on with Augusta Fells in Baltimore City. We're concerned about the audit in Baltimore County. And, you know, we've been pushing for accountability in our schools for quite a while. I know that the uh, state investigator general is now looking into the Baltimore City school situation. And, uh, you know, it's under investigation. Your thoughts on any criminal charges or not? I, I, you know, I let the prosecutors and the investigators take that out and see where it leads. But uh, certainly it looks as if there was definitely criminal wrongdoing that took place. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the yep. right. Yeah, this is, is it still coming? <laughs> I want to watch it when it's all the way over ahead here. Good shots here now.